Good morning. Good morning. Really loud today. <laughs> tonight, we're doing our choral candle and favorite hymns recital tonight at 6 p.m. right here. Everyone is welcome. I hope everybody tries to show up. It's going to be really fun. Uh, September 6th, this might have been a change from the last, uh, the last announcement, September 6th at 6 p.m. is when Frog resumes with the children's meeting. September 6th and not August 30th. Okay, September 9th and 10th, we have a booth at Riverfest. That's really cool. This past report will say more about it later. Um, Please fill out the attendance pad at the end of the queue so we know that you are here to worship with us today. Good morning. It is a joy to be in worship with all of you this morning. One note about Riverfest. We have a booth at Riverfest, and my plan is we have to have an activity. And who among us doesn't love coloring? And so we are going to have a booth with coloring sheets that are three feet by four feet so that we as the Clarksville community can color together and create some beautiful artwork. Part of having a booth at Riverfest is we will need some volunteers for that Saturday and Sunday. The Sunday date doesn't start until 11 o'clock, so don't worry. You can also still come to church. So we will continue to provide more information about that, but we are excited to be present with the Clarksville community the weekend of the 9th and 10th. Most importantly, I hope you know that whether this is your first time or you've been attending for years, whether you are strong in your faith or you still have some questions, no matter your age, your tax bracket, your ability, or the color of your skin, no matter who you love or who loves you, you are welcome here. I invite you now to join me in our call to worship. We come with praise for the wonderful works of God. The Holy One knows us and sustains us, even in our moments of confusion and doubt. Like clay in the hand of the potter, we are shaped into vessels of the divine will. We come to praise the wonderful works of God. I invite you now to stand as you are able as we sing together in number 139. Praise to the Lord the Almighty.
things remain standing as we affirm our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of his Pilate, was crucified, and he rose from the dead. He is the right hand of God the Father, and to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Caretaker of our souls, you search us and know us. You're acquainted with all of our ways. Your spirit hems us in, behind and before. You discern our thoughts from afar. If we take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead us and your might hold us fast. How can we bear such wonder? How can we fathom such awe and splendor? Breathe your spirit upon us and claim us as children of light that we might be found worthy of your love and spirit. Amen. You may remain seated as we sing together the number 388, O Come Well and Be. We will be singing it to the tune of Bless Be the Time. Yeah. 
like a reading of God's word. Pursue me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. shall I go from your spirit? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I say, let only darkness cover me, and the light about me be night. Even the darkness is not dark to you, the night is bright as the day, for darkness is as light with you. Let me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. 
Try me and know my thoughts. This morning, we will hear the words from the book, When God Made You. I knit you together in your mother's womb. Over and over in this psalm, we hear versions of no, known, and knowledge. God knows us. This past week, I picked Thomas up from school one day, and I was handed a letter and a paper cutout of a person. The letter read, Dear Parents, we will be talking with the children about how we are special and unique. We are sending home an art project for you to do with your child. The idea is to make this cutout resemble your child's features. You may use anything from your home. Yarn, paint, markers, googly eyes, fabric, crayons, etc. Please have your child's name somewhere on the front so that we can hang them in the school. We will use them all here. If you have any questions, please let us know. Thank you. I've been thinking nonstop about this letter since it came home with my child on Thursday. I've been thinking nonstop about it because I'm trying to figure out how to give an A. <laughs> how can I create the best likeness of my child without it looking like my 10-month-old did it by himself? Because this project is a project for me, and I guess Ryan too, as his parents. Which means that we're being graded against all the other kids' parents. And I have to get an A. I have to have the best likeness of my child made from the just random art supplies that I have accumulated since COVID started from each of my hyperfixations, from my cricket to crocheting to painting to markers to whatever else I can dig through in all of my art supplies. Because I will have the best likeness of my child on a paper cutout of a person. And then I realized how crazy I sound. <laughs> trying to get an A on a project for my 10 month old. And as I realized how crazy I sound, I also realized just how wildly I had missed the point. Because this isn't about having the perfect likeness of my child on a paper cut out person. Because I know for a fact that all of our children are unique and special and perfect and the greatest child on the planet. No questions asked. And the point of this assignment isn't getting every detail perfect. The point of the assignment is that we know our child. We know all of the different 
levels of their hair because it hasn't quite grown in evenly. We know the rings on their arms that have gotten tan lines this summer. We know the color of their eyes. We know their height. We know what they like. We know that they will smear yogurt all over their face and in their hair like it's their job. Because I know for a fact that my child and your children and all of the children in Thomas's preschool here at the church are unique and special and perfect and the greatest child on the planet. And if it's true of our children, then maybe it's true of our parents' children. Maybe our parents are saying about us that we are unique and special and perfect and the greatest child on the planet. And maybe our parents' parents Maybe our grandparents are saying it about our parents. Because the thing is, we are all, each and every one of us, unique and special and perfect and the greatest child on the planet. And if you didn't or don't have a parent who has affirmed you in that way, or if you have a tense relationship with a parent, then I am your mom now. And I am saying with all certainty that you, you are unique and special and perfect and the greatest child on the planet. And that is so because we have been claimed by God. And not only have we been claimed by God, we have been created in God's own image. Not only have we been created in God's own image, we are known by God. In Eugene Peterson's translation of the Bible, The Message, he translates verses 1 through 16 of Psalm 130 like this. God, investigate my life. Get all the facts firsthand. I'm an open book to you. Even from a distance, you know what I'm thinking. You know when I leave and when I get back. I'm never out of your sight. You know everything I'm going to say before I start the first sentence. I look behind me and we're there. Then at the head, and you're there too. Your reassuring presence coming and going. This is too much, too wonderful. I can't take it all in. Is there any place I can go to avoid your spirit, to be out of your sight? If I climb to the sky, you're there. If I go underground, you're there. If I flew on morning's wings to the far western horizon, you find me in a minute. You're already there by the end. Then I said to myself, Oh, he sees me even in the dark. At night I'm immersed in the light. It's a fact. Darkness is not dark to you. Night and day, darkness and light, they're all the same to you. Oh yes, you shaped me first inside, then out. You formed me in my mother's womb. I thank you, high God, for breathtaking. Body and soul, I am marvelously made. I worship in adoration. What a creation. You know me inside and out. You know every bone in my body. You know exactly how I was made bit by bit, how I was sculpted from nothing into something. Like an open book, you watched me grow from conception to birth, 
All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days of my life all prepared before I even lived one day. We are known. If I were to give each of you a person to decorate as your child, or as your spouse, or as your parent, or as yourself, we are known. We are known deeply and in connection with our family and our friends. There are times when we see a stranger and somehow they see us so deeply and truly. Friends, we are known by God. We have been created by God. And we have been created to be unique and special and perfect and the greatest children on the planet. When God Made You by Matthew Paul Turner, illustrated by David Cottrell. You, you, when God made you, God made you all shiny and new. An incredible you, a you all your own. A you unlike anyone else ever known. An exclusive design one God refined. You are perfectly crafted one of a kind. Because when God made you, somehow God knew that the world needed someone exactly like you. You, you, God thinks about you. God was thinking of you long before your debut. From the very beginning of the history and time, you, little one, never left God's mind. God imagined your eyes, your head shape and size, and knew what you looked like when you felt surprised. God pictured your nose and all ten of your toes, the sound of your voice, God had it composed. The lines on your hands, your hair, every strand, God knew every detail like it was all planned. Out of billions of faces from cultures or races, people God made from all different places, God knew your name, your picture is framed. God's family without you would not be the same. Because when God made you, this much is true. The world got to meet who God already knew. You, you, when God sees you, God delights in what is and sees only what's true. That you, yes, you, in all of your glory, bring color and rhythm and rhyme to God's story. So be you, fully you, a show-stopping review. Live your life in full color, every tint, every hue. Discover, explore, have faith but love more, and learn and relearn all that God made for you. Use your talents and passions, those gifts that God fashioned. Think up ideas and put them to action. Because God loves you, creating true self-display when light on the inside through art is portraying. When you make believe the stories conceive, the heroics, the magic, those tricks of your sleeve. When you dance alone, spinning like a cyclone, being whoever, whatever, in a world of your own. God smiles and hears why. In the spark of your eye, a familiar reflection shines light from inside. Because when God made you and the world ood and odd, in heaven they called you an image of God. 
you, you, when God dreams about you, God dreams about all that in you will be true. That you, God's you, will be hopeful and kind, a giver who lives with all heart, soul, and mind. A dreamer who dreams in big and small things, one who keeps dreaming in journeys upstream. A mover, a shaker, a lover of nature, a builder of bridges, you, the peacemaker. A you who views others as sisters and brothers and lives by three words, love one another. A confident you, strong and brave too. You being you is God's dream coming true. Because when God made you, all of heaven was beaming. Over you, God was smiling and already dreaming. Thanks be to God. At this time, I invite our ushers forward for this morning's offering. <laughs> Let us pray. O oh God, pour your spirit upon these our gifts. Gifts that have been graciously given to us that we now humbly return to you. May they be used to be a reminder in the world of your love and grace. May they be used to remind all people of their uniqueness and strength and perfection. In Jesus' name we pray.
kindergartners, to middle schoolers, to high schoolers, to college students, to people out of college by five years or 10 years or 20 years or 30 years or 40 years. We give thanks. We give thanks for all who are with us in worship. A few other prayer requests we have this morning. We want to lift up Jody Robinson. She was in the hospital in Hendersonville this past week in AFib. She is home now and resting. Um, but we want to continue to lift her up in prayer. We also want to remember Ken Pine. He had a biopsy done this past week and is in some pain from that. There you go, Mama. We also We also want to remember Lee Manrox, who is in ICU at Vanderbilt. We also want to lift up Grace Manning's son, Ryan. He is hiking on the John Muir Trail in California, and he's hoping to make it to the ranger station at the Devil's Post pile before the storm hits. He is hiking by himself. So we want to keep him in our prayers. Are there any other joys or concerns this morning? We want to keep Margaret's great granddaughter, who is three years old, who was in an ATV accident over the weekend. She spent the evening in the hospital, but she is okay. So we want to keep her. We want to keep Doyle's mom and brother in our prayers. They likely have COVID, and it is her first time having COVID, and so we pray that they recover well. God, you know us. You have knitted us together. You have created us. God, and in your deep knowing of who we are, know the deepest prayers of our hearts. You know our prayers before we have spoken them aloud. You know our prayers when we ourselves don't know them yet. Oh God, and even as you know us, even as you search us, we offer to you our prayers. We offer to you our prayers of thanksgiving for children big and small, for the ways in which you have uniquely created us. We give you thanks for this community, this community who you have knit together for love and for support, for prayer, for grieving, for rejoicing, 
Pray that your presence is made known. That you are with each person who is receiving care, each person who is providing care. God will lift up to you. We lift up to you the prayers of our hearts. We lift up to you the prayers for our world and our country. We lift up to you those who have been affected by devastating storms, by devastating fires. And now together as your children, we pray the prayer that Jesus first taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to the close of our service this morning, I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing together in number 399, Take My Life and Let It Be.
Friends, hear this truth. You are unique. You are strong. You are special. And you are the greatest child on earth. Thanks be to God.